let's do something a little bit different today. We're going to create a device class icon for EM7. A device class icon is used when we are defining, uh, defining a device class. And you'll see when I look at any device in the system that there is a little icon associated with that and that's tied to the device class and, and the device subclass. If we go to the system customize device classes portion of the product, we'll see here, for example, if we look at this 3Com, that the 3Com uh, 2000 terminal server defines that it wants to use the 3Com PNG as a device icon. And that just happens to be uh, this guy right here. So this button that I just selected allows me not only to preview different icons so I can see what's what's here, but it also allows me to import new ones. And this becomes very handy if I create custom device classes for newly supported devices uh, that I may be doing my own self-certification on and I want to add a nice icon to it in the system. So we've got a request here to do one for Arbor Networks. Uh, let's go ahead and, and uh, see what the process consists of. If we look through the system here, this is uh, these icons are organized in alphabetical order. Uh, you can see that we go straight from Alpha to Aruba. There's no Arbor in there. So we need an Arbor Networks device icon. How are we going to do that? The first thing I usually do if I'm on a new system, of course, I've done this a number of times, but if I'm on a new system, I might simply take uh, one of these icons here, like uh, this one and simply save it off to my local file system. I'll say my SkyDrive, for example, and go to my uh, my icons. You can say yeah, I've, I've got one already. I'll call this, uh, you know, blank icon. I've already got one called blank. I put a, a underscore in front of it just to cause it to sort first in the list. But I'm just going to reuse uh, this existing ones uh, so uh, I can create a uh, an Arbor Networks from that. So I've got that icon on my system. I'm simply going to bring up an editor right now. This happens to be Snagit. I use Snagit for all kinds of things. You could use GIMP or you could use Paint Shop or uh, Photoshop or whatever you want to use. Uh, I like GIMP because it gives me what I need um, in terms of, uh, of features. Now here you can see my blank icon. I'm just going to select that and open that icon in uh, in my editor. I'm going to blow it up a little bit so I can see what I'm doing. And first thing I'll do is uh, I want to uh, I just want to get rid of this image that's in the system. So I'll say give me a uh, give me a white box and just kind of erase that. There we go. That's nice. I'm going to flatten all of my layers, and that essentially gives me a, a blank to work with, which is what I called it, blank icon. Now, one minor detail that you'll notice here, do you see the checker boxes behind the, um, the outside edges of the icon? The checker box indicates that that is a transparent layer. That's what we call an alpha layer. This is what causes this to have the nice transparency. Uh, when it's being overlaid on top of other things on a topology map or um, on, on top of other components in a user interface panel that might pop up. But this gives me what I want to as a blank icon. And I can and I typically save this, right, so that I can use this for other purposes in the future. So now that I've got my blank icon, let's go ahead and set this aside for a moment, go back to my browser, and I've got a Google tab here. Let's go to Google Images and see what we can find for Arbor. Now I could go to just Arbor's um, homepage, but let's uh, look at that. And Google even knows what I want, Arbor Networks logo. So Arbor Networks logo is going to give me several different things to choose from. They all look lovely. Um, now this one here is okay, but it's got a white background, which is yeah, that's all right, but I, go, I don't know if it's exactly the same white as the background of my icon. What I'd really like to find, if I can find one, is a PNG that has, uh, that has everything in it that I want. I don't see a PNG, but this one 
this is actually a really nice image here. So I think I'm going to right click on this uh, and save this this image uh, into again same place icons, but no, actually Arbor Black Logo 4. That's fine. Uh, that's just the way it is. I'm just going to save that just like that and uh, go back to my image editor. Now with my image editor, what I can do is I can uh, I'm just going to open open that file and here it is right here. You'll notice that in in my editor here it opened up that image as a separate image and and here's my my blank icon. So I'll just take this as it is and oops. Let's not do that. Let's shrink this down. I'm going to say give this to me maybe about 20%. That's good. Uh, cop, come over here and I'm going to copy it in. You'll notice when I copy a large image that it automatically enlarged my background layer here. That's okay. I don't mind about that. I'll show you how to fix that in a minute. So uh, we've got that. Actually, you know what? I don't even like that and I'll show you why. I want to uh, I want to use my trim tool here and I want to get rid of all of that uh, border so now that I've got rid of the border, this gives me uh, an easier image to work with. I don't have to worry about overwriting the, the sides of my icon. So that looks pretty good, just like that. Now I, I could take other things off of their web page if I wanted to, but I think we'll just take it just like that. I'm going to come back up here and say trim again on my editor. And uh, let's say, let's push this down to 100%. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So I like that. I'll save that off as an image. We'll call it Arbor Networks. And we're done. So there you go. There is our device class icon. Now in EM7, I'll come right back into here and I'll come to Icons, Import, I'll bring up my file requester. There it is, Arbor Networks, and import, and we are all set. Somewhere down in here, after I scroll through all my stuff and my millions and millions, there it is right there, Arbor Networks. So that is now available for me to select. And so there you go, that is the creation of a device class icon. I hope you found this useful. Thanks for listening. Bye now.